I wonder who it is. Who's the scammer? I wonder. Hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is a little odd, but I'd like you to just use your imagination for a moment here. Just picture this. One day you're just sitting there enjoying your favorite MMO. You're playing oh the game. Boy. You're having a pretty good time, but you start to feel a little MMO underpowered. Gaming. But then checking out the in-game cash shop, you happen. Last arc was so bad, man. Oh, I spent so much money in that game. Thank you, Damien. Hey, there's an item here that has a percent chance of granting Diablo, a pretty powerful immortal. upgrade. That sounds nice, right? Now it's Level 21, Vile Nightmare, Flower Poetry. Oh my god, I'm getting PTSD from this. <laughs> I'm actually getting PTSD. It's not guaranteed. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It clearly states there's a possibility to get it. You're not going to get it for sure. It's not too bad. You got a chance of getting the item. And best of all, it only cost a single dollar. Okay, so sure. Why not? You spend the dollar. You open the item. And uh, to darnish, wouldn't you know it? You, you just... I think in Lost Ark, I had an instance where I failed an upgrade 20 times in a row. I'm not even kidding. I think it was 18 or 20. And it was like really, really unlucky. Didn't happen to get it. Better luck next time. And then over the yeah. next couple of weeks, periodically, you decide to roll the dice again, spending a few more dollars here and there, hoping for- BDO was really bad about it too. Oh my gosh. At a certain point, you can't even guarantee it. It's like, added rate, 20%. And then it's not actually 20%. For this chance, you fail five upgrade, times in a row. How is nothing. that statistically Those weeks possible? Of trying turn into months and then into years. Now imagine if after a decade of you buying an item, rolling, and not getting what you hoped for, you found out that there was actually never a chance that you would get it. Yes, you were told Wait, otherwise. What? You were said there was a probability, there were odds that you could get this big upgrade. But in actuality, those odds were zero. You had no chance to ever get that item, that upgrade, that whatever. Well, this is no. Is it BDO? Please don't tell me. Please don't tell me that's BDO. It has. It, it can't be. Fairy tale. It's actually more or less exactly what has happened. Maple over the course Story. Of a decade to players what? of Maple Story. In that game, Nexon sells items called cubes that can be used to enhance gear, oh rolling God. on various potential stat boost and upgrades. With the most desirable of these being quite rare. What players? Oh no! I had a friend who was really into Maple Story. He spent like at least a hundred to two hundred dollars on that game. Oh my God! Nexon, I can believe it. Yeah, Nexon also closed down Maple Story too, if I remember correctly, right? Because it wasn't as popular. I played Maple Story too. Why Maple Story? I think because the game has been out for so long, they wanted to like milk people for cash, and then they probably didn't get away with it. Let's just watch. Didn't know is that behind the scenes, Nexon was periodically reducing the odds of getting those best rolls lower and lower and lower without informing anybody. And no, this isn't a hearsay or just community conjecture. Just this past week, the Korean Fair Trade Commission announced that after. Oh no, the feds got them. The feds! The feds! Today, the Fair Trade Commission determined that random items from Maple Story and Bubble Fighter were suspected of violating the Electronic Commerce Act and announced the imposition of a fine. We apologize from the, <laughs> from the bottom of our hearts for causing great disappointment to our users. This issue began in 2021 when Maple Story self disclosed the probability of the cube item. Oh my god, the FTC got them, the Korean FTC, the feds. <laughs> Holy Here's shit. An investigation, they found Nexon guilty of unfair rate manipulation and have levied against them the highest fine in their history, the highest fine they've ever given a company, which was $9 million. The Guys, do you think that $9 million fine is like going to hit them in the pockets? Or do you think that they made more than $9 million? I think with how popular my, my how popular Maple Story is, $9 million probably takes like a tiny little cut out of their money. Yeah, $9 million is chump change. Exactly.
It's probably like nothing, probably about nothing. Five million dollars. So according to the Korean FTC, they began this inquiry back in 2021 after Nexon was required to publish the rate odds for these cube items, which you can basically just think of these as loot boxes or ah. gacha. That's essentially what they are. They're loot boxes that have a chance of getting you upgrades and enhancements for your character. I am not a Maple Story player, but that is my understanding of what cubes are. Now, once okay, hold on. What if Genshin? What if? You make a game and then you reduce the chance of like this really, really hot waifu to be like zero from a loot box. Do you think you could get away with it? I think people would be desperate enough and then make it like a 0.1% chance. Tell them it's like a 0.1% chance and then just keep going and going and going. Like it's, it make it really, really low. Impossible. Kind of like how Diablo 4 was like that too. With those items that basically can't drop like from like the game at all. 0.1 considered okay chance a lot of yeah yeah Once you're those right odds were made public by nexon the korean ftc then launched the investigation to try to determine if those odds were accurate because there was a lot of speculation amongst the community with people actually like posting their own statistics that basically amounted to in some way or fashion nexon was lying or at make two billion dollars 1.6 billion after net get fined nine million profit angi yeah exactly that's what i'm saying they probably made way 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 more p money it's just this entire formula formula they use as a public knowledge if i recall okay if well if they're not if it's on the table then i guess not it doesn't really work at the very least, those highest percentage odds weren't exactly what they were saying that they were. Mm -hmm. Now, in the process of this investigation, combing through various internal Nexon documents, emails, and even game code, well, the Korean FTC discovered some pretty seriously messed up stuff. Here's some of the major highlights. All First right, off, Nexon me. introduced these cubes into MapleStory back in May 2010. These items were sold for about $1 for red cubes and about $1.8 close to $2 for black cubes. Players would purchase these cubes for two primary reasons to obtain passive boosts and to upgrade an item to legendary which is the highest rarity of item in the game now after they began selling these cubes nexon then started manipulating probabilities for both of them so oh my god i always felt like bdo was like that you know what i mean in bdo you would get to 24 or 50 percent chance of hitting it and you would just fail it over and fucking over it would always be like It'd just be really close. It would be like a 50-50 and then I hit it on the third one. You know, it's so cringe. BDO was actually fair in that regard? I don't know, man. I disagree. I was fucked over on a 60-70% chance like three times. I don't know how you can roll that badly, but I guess it's possible. Maybe it's skewed. And they just don't tell you and they're not they don't have to tell you so first of all they blocked users know. from obtaining the most of course, ideal upgrade combinations so those most preferred roles that people were buying cubes in hope of getting those were actually never achievable at a point point. and second they also lowered the probability of upgrading an item while making those changes nexon not only never informed consumers but they even went as to as far as to issue false statements uh in august 2011 they came out claiming that no changes were made people the community was like hey it seems like uh we're not getting stuff as often as we used to we're not getting those i wonder if they can do a class action lawsuit but i guess that would be too much of a hassle if you lied to people i don't know man i was pen and uh what was what was below pen pen and what's below pen man i'm, I'm spacing out chat help me out bdo pen Try duo quad. That wasn't quad, was it? Was it quad? Oh, I meant I'm cooked. I thought it was a different word, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> Full top tier in video does a shithole, but not a scam. I, I fucking hate it. I I only went to quad. I had a few pen pieces, but yeah. Seventy percent BG three awesome, and sometimes get bad luck. I feel like in Gotcha James, they make it to make money. Tet. It was Ted's. Ted's. Jesus. I thought it was. Man, I haven't played BDO in so long, but yeah, Ted. Pen, Ted, Try, Duo.
prime pre it was pre yeah it was good upgrades as often as we used to and next song came out and said no 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 changes were made the odds of getting good rolls or upgrades are the same as they've always been that's what they yeah, said and then this also people. happened again or something along these lines happened again in 2016 nexon's director came out and made a statement to maple story players he said we are well aware that we cannot deceive customers especially in terms of probability but they did but they did I think that's probably why they did it because you can't I don't I can't imagine class action lawsuits are a thing in Korea. Big piss. Mm, Massive mm, piss. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all, thank you, Skywood. Thank you for the tier one. Who cares about some video game scams? The made anthem fake gameplay and Miller's infinite early game excess games get away. We care because we don't want it to happen, that's why. Like they got away with it because people didn't care, you know what I mean? And in this regard, we actually think, no, there was no purpose odds to are the same. Right. After adjusted for inflation, Angie. <laughs> yeah, odds are the same, exactly. Our customers, there was no situation to deceive them, and there was no reason to deceive them. We are not deceiving inflation. guys, we're telling the truth. At the very same time that they were making those statements in 2016, the probabilities were being manipulated at that exact moment. Like, so not only did they reduce the rates for high rolls and upgrades, putting Take the best this. combinations Massive to an this. actual probability of zero, not only did they then not disclose that stuff, but they also deliberately went out of their way to lie about it in the process of this all happening. So as part of the Korean FTC's investigation, we also were able to see various internal Nexon documents that were released. And uh -oh. through that, we discovered that they had many back and forth conversations Nexon also had multiple patent for dynamic rates. If a lot of user activity decrease rates, increase rates for users with low activity. I swear BDO does this. Bro, I, I swear BDO does this. It, it has dynamic rates. I, 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 you, on God, like you, if I, if I could find out tomorrow, it'd be fucking sick, but I can't. It has, dude, it's so lame. And I don't mean like, and I don't mean like, uh, what is it called? When you increase the, uh, how many times you bash your head into the, into upgrading. I'm talking about like, there's just like something, man. This, Let me finish reading this. Change rates based on location. If gotcha items exceed expected number or set amount, decrease rates. Change rates based on number of friends on buddy list. Wait, how does that? Wait, how does that affect? Why would you do that? Change rates based on buddy list stats. Change rates for certain gotcha items above some rarity. Change rates based on users' current items. I totally think this is also a thing. This one right here. If you have friends at Giga or Raze, you will rec recommend them to spend. Oh, shit! Oh! So if you have a lot of friends, you just... E Word of mouth. That is freaky, actually. I I totally get that because I had a friend. I'm serious. I had a friend who spent like $2,000 a month on like BDO. And he would tell me, oh, just keep bashing. Just do it. Come on. Just like spend a little bit of money. It's not that bad. And I'd be like, Erb, no. I do mean like not like an actual friend I hung out with. I meant like someone on my friends list who would talk about it. And I'm like, dude, what the frick? conversations about whether the company should be disclosing this information, but ultimately they had decided against it. And I think what's probably most interesting about this whole thing is the reason Nexon initially came out with those Q probabilities in 2021. That was apparently in response to this big like refund crisis. The, uh, I don't remember. I don't happen to know the exact catalyst for that, but for I whatever reason, either. the player base was in an uproar. There was a lot of uh, petitions and refunds taking place. And then in response to that, Nexon came out and they're like, hey, here's our probability for the cubes. But while that was while that whole thing was happening we also saw through those release documents that several email chains were taking place while they were navigating this debacle uh -oh. and nexon brass was basically coming down issuing orders to not under any circumstance should anyone reveal that rate manipulation that had been taking <laughs> place over the past decade meanwhile while researching maple story for this whole thing the korean ftc was also doing investigations into nexon's other games specifically oh. those that nexon developed and published inside of korea they 
found a, a similar uh, rate probability manipulation was taking place in the game Bubble Fighter, and they claim that as a result, there was a pretty big impact on users who play that game. And there are concerns now spreading about whether they, they are doing probability manipulation in their other games. I mean, you know- I'm sure other Korean companies do it too. If they do it, then other ones do it too, man. There's no way. There is no freaking way. It has to be. Like, there's no fucking way, man. Let me fucking look. Mm -mm -mm. Korean FTC. Nexon is owned. No, um, Pearl Abyss owns BDO. BDO's Korean. Yeah, but they're not owned by Nexon or yeah, Nexon. At least I don't think. <laughs> Let it be your head cannon. <laughs> it's scary to think that like. People get into this space where it's like, it's okay to spend hundreds of dollars a week, if not more, on like, pay to win upgrades. Well, hey, as soon as you get investigated, Who owns Pearl people Abyss? are finding probability manipulation Who in owns? the games that they are investigating. There's, there's a, a reasonable expectation that we should think maybe there's some also some probability manipulation taking place in the other games that haven't been thoroughly enough investigated yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, and a little fun fact here, the Korean FTC also revealed that Nexon, through the sale of these cube items from September 2010 up through 2021, they made about five, or I'm sorry, 420 Million. So it's like nothing to them. Explain that Nexon made five hundred fifty million, five hundred twenty million dollars worth of sales through from September two thousand ten to twenty twenty one. So it's like nothing. Nine million dollars is nothing to them. Oh, it's like a tax. Like it's it, they got a little bit taxed off of it. That is crazy. Million dollars uh, through the through the sale of these cube items. So they made $420 million through the sale of these cube items that they were manipulating the rates of. Even though people were still getting stuff, they weren't getting what they were hoping for. They had no chance of getting the most ideal thing and they made $420 million off of that in response to just from the cube not from other stuff just from the cube discovering this they have been fined nine million dollars uh that's like a two percent tax for lying to your customers and yeah that's yeah okay, it's great, nothing awesome they're, this, they're definitely gonna stop doing it now right with that two percent tax levied against them now there's also a couple of other really interesting things that came to light here again like i said a bunch of emails internal documents uh game code was all scoured through so we've also discovered that next owns the patent for what is dynamic RNG based on player activity. The main highlights of this patent are as follows. One, they will change the probability if a user has a lot of activity. So if you are- They decrease it. So if you're new to the game, your rates are higher. That's insane playing the game a lot they will decrease your <clears throat> rates or they can decrease they've got the patent to decrease rates of drops of upgrades of uh, dice rolls whatever if you play the game a lot they can increase the rate for any users who happen to have low activity they can also change the rates of things based on a player's location for gacha items if they exceed a certain number of basically doling out high rarity stuff they can then decide to decrease the rates they can also change what rates the? based on the number of friends somebody has on their buddy list List. They can change rates based on buddy list stats. So I guess how powerful or not the other people on your friends list are. They could also change. That's... Yeah, that makes sense. It does. That is so scary. That is such crazy psychological manipulation. I didn't even think of that until I thought to the day that guy that I played with, he was a warrior man. He would unironically spend like thousands of dollars and then just go and work and then be like, okay, I'm just going to dump my thousand dollars of the week or the month into BDO and talk about how he, oh God, I, I smashed my pen this week. Oh my goodness. And this was back when pens were rare. Like we just hit tets. People were hitting tets when I was p playing and pens were rare. Pen was like, oh shit. So insane. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm.
change the rates for certain gacha items that are above Disgusting. a certain rarity and that change the rates based on users account current items so if you already have a bunch of really good items they could decrease the rates or if you don't have a lot of good I items they that. can increase the rates they've got the patent to do all of those things what a huge massive a surprise patent. right now rates changing for things in games whether it's drop rates for items whether it's percent chance to upgrade items and gears and, and games that have those like gear upgrade systems or whether it's percent chances of getting rewards from things in the cash shop like is the main focus of this story here today uh, i think we've all always been aware that those rates i just don't understand if they're like, are they able to get away with lying to you about this number in particular like if they say it's 24 percent, can they lie to you and say it's like in the game code it's not actually 24 it's more like 21 or 20 but on the outside it's 24 percent yeah i i think they can like they, they do it to just manipulate you oh this is why i don't play video anymore i just get so irritated could change looking I at mean, this i personally have never like False advertising? The rate. Well, so is lying to your uh, audience like MapleStory did and getting fined for $9 million. It's lying, but they still do it. Of, uh, of getting a legendary card when I open a Hearthstone pack, for example, or any sort of equivalent to that where I'm getting a mystery box, I'm opening a loot box, I'm engaging with some gotcha system. I've never personally looked to see, hey, what's the percent chance to get the highest thing that I want? Is it like a 1% chance? Is it a 0.01% chance? I usually never look, right? I mean, in general, I try to avoid loot boxes uh, nowadays. It's something that I engaged with in the past, but I am just... I can, I can also tell you about an experience I had. I used to play Hearthstone basic. I, I still do on occasion, but I played Hearthstone free to play a lot. And I noticed when you buy packs for real money, you... You're the rarity of the cards inside of the bot packs instead of for gold, which is the in-game currency, was a lot higher when I bought like it, like a $20 pack. There's no number and there's no advertising in there saying, oh, you're guaranteed to get a legendary or you're guaranteed to do this. It was just, it felt higher when I did it with, like you, you'd open 20, pa 20 packs in Hearthstone and it would be way higher chance of getting a legendary or higher tier cards that you could spend dust on than spending on gold. I know it's anecdotal, but it just definitely felt like it was ra uh, rigged. Two rares max. It, it was just crazy to me. Like you'd spend the same amount or open the same amount, but somehow almost always 90% of the time when I opened it with real money, it would be better. So why bother? Why waste the gold? Just actively against engaging with nowadays. I just, I, if I can avoid that system at all in playing any games, I absolutely will. I'll only engage with it in service of like using those free things that they dole out to try to incentivize us to spend money. I mean, you know, there's like a line to balance there, right? Because if it's a free to play game, I'm happy to spend some money. I would just sure. vastly prefer not to spend it on digital gambling, gambling for digital goods. I'm just not personally interested yeah, like in that. Yeah, like cosmetics are okay. We've always known that like the best stuff has a small percent chance. Oh, and yes, it's obviously understandable that those percent rates could change right but the the main thing is it. that they are supposed oh, to no, and got this is something it, that been, uh, continuously reinforced in recent years these companies should be they should be publishing those and they should be upfront about but they won't though they'll lose all their money or at least some of the money that they would potentially earn <laughs> don't forget Activision has a pan on matchmaking giving you easier matches if you spend money i am absolutely convinced blizzard has never confirmed this when i used to play hearthstone when you would get on a win streak you would fight a bot that would perfectly destroy you and have every answer in in their hand or top decking it to make you have a consistent 50 percent win rate i know it's not it's like anecdotal it is i've heard this from big streamers too who used to play hearthstone I would watch them go on like a 10 streak and then they would always get beat down by someone who absolutely top decks and destroys them with like every answer possible. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, I know it's tinfoil hat, but it, I feel like it's totally possible. It's, it's just unreal to me that the, and it, I don't know. I'm turning into my schizo like Hearthstone ranting, but like I genuinely think that's real.
about what those rates are at the very least at the bare minimum it's right like if you're gonna screw us with the digital gambling and they they you, we should at least know what the probability is for mm -mm, getting whatever mm -mm. it is desirable that we are in search of probably the biggest thing in in this whole story is the fact that the, that highest combination right the thing that people were really looking for when, when purchasing these cubes and again forgive me because i'm not a maple story player i'm, I'm not, not intimately either. familiar with the system but i understand the basics of it it is a loot box it is a gotcha you are spending money you're hoping for this ideal thing the fact that that ideal thing, this ideal combination of stats basically was not possible to achieve. That is the re them uh, them finally adjusting percentage rates from like 2% to like 1.8%. That's almost whatever. They should disclose it, but that's almost whatever. Them making it so that there was something in there that people wanted that they could never get and not telling them they can never get it. That's the biggest BS of this entire. But Diablo did that. Do people forget that Diablo 4 came out and they had those legendary items that basically never dropped and someone calculated that it would be physically impossible for someone to get those items because it's like such a low drop chance? Whatever it's called. People played Diablo 4? Yes, a lot of people did. Mm-hmm. I forget what the items were called. There was like a helmet, Shaco, and some other stuff. But, yeah, it's... Mm -mm -mm. Uniques? Yeah, uniques, like Shaco and stuff. Uber uniques. They're possible for someone, just on any particular person. No, 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 no. They calculated the percentage, and from the time that you started playing Diablo 4, it would take you like a year or something for you to get the drop. Now you can farm them easy? Yeah, because they changed it because people called them out on it. They just did it. They were like, oh, whoopsie doopsie. We didn't realize that the number was so low. It's like, no, you knew what you were doing. There's no, there's no physical reason or reasonable reason why you wouldn't put it in the game unless you wanted people to just keep playing the game forever. I swear they did this in Legion as well with legendaries. Entire thing. It's just absolutely crazy. And I know you're not really asking yourself this question, but if anyone was asking, why are they doing this? Well, uh, here's a fun thing. Through this investigation, we got some of the uh, details about the top spenders in Korean Maple Story. And uh, those top spenders are still gonna keep playing. So millions of players with items will be floating around, just impossible for them to get. No, no, nobody had them. I remember because there was a Diablo 4 streamer or a, um, and, um, yeah, it was a Diablo 4 streamer at the time. I'm pretty sure he begged people to, like, spread the word to find out if there was anyone with this item in the game. And they didn't, nobody had it. That's why they changed it. Because nobody had the items. Nobody did. There was like one person of like a million or something. Like for one specific item. But why? To keep uh, player engagement up and to keep people spending money. That's why. And they have been spending a lot of money. So the number one spender, the, the in, we're talking individual people, how much money they have spent, uh, the documentation d disclosed its stats from 2019 to 2022. The number one spender in 2019 spent $27,000. In 2020, they spent $125,000. In 2021, $212,000. In 2022, $176,000. And we are seeing similar numbers for everyone. Holy shit. 27,000, 125, 212. This is the top spender. What the fuck? I can't imagine spending a $200,000 on a video game. Oh, this hurts my brain. Goes back down after lockdown. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of funny, huh? Yeah, all of them go back down after lockdown. 2022, 176. 
thousand dollars and we are seeing similar numbers for everyone insane, else man. in the top 10 Con congratulations for making the list guys everyone else in the top 10 highest spenders in korean maple story tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars total spent uh year after oh, year yeah. from 2019 to 2022 and those are just for the four years that we have happen to have access to uh, that they dug up in this investigation so yes insane. if for some reason you ask yourself the question why are they doing this it's because they just make a crap ton of money they make yep. so much money these are individual spenders that are spending tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on this game that is why they are happy to engage in this rate manipulation 420 million dollars just from spent just from um profiting off of one item selling not for all of Maple Story, for one item. Y'all, so I gotta one. wonder, right? If you're someone who's spending one thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand dollars a year, are they using that dynamic RNG uh, rate manipulation on you? Are they progressively the the more thousand of dollars you spend, progressively dropping your percentage odds of getting stuff? Also. We got this dynamic rate manipulation when say maybe uh, popular streamers are streaming the game and developers happen to know this is happening. Are they going into their account and increasing the percentage chance of them getting rewards? Is that happening? Can we prove it? I, no, not as far as I'm aware. I'm not capable of doing it. I'm sure some investigative body could, but it's not going to be me. Is there a good chance it's happening? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, because we know it's possible. And if it's possible and it's going to net a business and making more money, you bet your bottom dollar they're going to do it. So what does Nexon have to say in response to all of this? Well, uh, I, I'm sure they don't care. And the whales are going to keep spending. I'm sure they're going to keep have whales keep spending money. Five million bit badge. What the hell? Holy shit, you, you kind of are a whale, huh? <laughs> Oh my god. For one, they came out with a uh, stream hosted by two Maple Story game directors where they said the following really three sorry. statements. Strap in for this one. The very first statement they made was uh, the reason they actually lowered the chance, for the, the probability chance of getting that most desirable cube roll outcome. They said it was actually done for the sake of game balance. No, it wasn't because. It was for game balance because if they had to um, make the cube a certain percentage, people would spend the money and then stop playing because they can't spend more money to get to the highest level. They'd have to keep balancing the game up, you know what I mean? Invent new numbers. They're not wrong. They're not lying. It is for game balance, but it's for them to balance. Because they wanted to make more money from people who kept on buying yeah, in hopes of getting those exactly. high rolls. That wasn't the reason. They had to lower the percentage chance of getting those best mm -hmm. rolls because they made a mistake. When they were initially balancing the game, they were, oh, oopsie, oopsie. We gave out uh, too high of percentage. Too many people were getting these really good upgrades. Yep, it yep. was totally causing massive exactly. imbalance issues with the game, and we just can't. We, we, we can't have that, right? We can't have an imbalanced game. We'll make a ton of money in the process of lowering that probability, but it's it's for the sake of balance. That's why we lowered the odds. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm, also mm -hmm. said too, that they are denying any dynamic percentage odds being applied to cubes. They can't deny having the patent because that's public knowledge. We know they have the patent for dynamic RNG. They're just promising us. Pro uh, trust me, guys. I promise we're not using that system in the cube in the cube thing that you pay for in those loot boxes. We're not using dynamic RNG. No. We promise. We haven't been investigated for it yet, but maybe in a year. Maybe in a year we'll get investigated and then we'll say we're really, really sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, we're not. We promise it's not happening there, okay? And then finally, they apologized and they said, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to do our best to regain mm -hmm. customer trust once again. Please, we're, we're telling please keep guys, spending money. You. Please, Forget please, all please, other please. the times we were manipulating the rates knowingly and then publicly making statements saying that we weren't yeah, manipulating we're the rates and nothing had ever changed. Also, in a separate statement after the Korean FTC released their findings and then announced that they had a $9 million fine, Nexon came out and said, listen, it was customary for game companies to not disclose probabilities between 2010 and 2016. I don't I have an cheating. exact recollection of the timeline, but I do know there was a long time where loot boxes and gotcha systems didn't disclose the rate. There just wasn't a lot of pressure on companies to do so. And so why would they do it? You know, I we have to put pressure on these companies because they're just going to keep pushing what, what they can get away with now at this point.
This just proves it. They're good. The fact that they say, oh, we didn't do it on the cube, even though they're being actively like investigated by the Korean FTC, it just shows that they don't care. They want to get away with it. <laughs> Why would they? They make so much fucking money. Who cares? Nine million dollars. <laughs> they make that probably in like a month. Off of that thing alone, that one item. I don't know if Wizards of the Coast tells me the chance of getting a gay's cradle when I pull an Urza Saga pack. I don't know if they publish their probability rates, but I know that many, many years ago, as far as I was aware, that wasn't happening. But things have changed over time, and it's yeah, true. Sure. Cool they beam. are correct that it was not customary cool for people to disclose probability rates, at least as far back as 10 years ago, if I recall correctly. And then they also said, hey, man, the Korean FTC, they're doing huge damage to the Korean game companies due to this retroactive uh, disposition. I, I, I guess arguing that you guys are digging back 10 years and punishing us for these crappy stuff we did. No, no, no. Mm. Don't do that. Punish us for the crappy stuff we're doing right now. Please what? don't punish us for doing the crappy things and manipulating our numbers 10 years ago. Just sue us for what we have right now. Otherwise, we're going to lose even more money. I'm tired, Chad. I'm tired. I'm tired. Can I just have a normal game? Oh man, just play a game like like Baldur's Gate. At least that doesn't have loot boxes in it. Which I'm sure they could do. I'm sure if they kept digging, they'd find stuff for Nexon that they could probably find them for. So I'm as sure. we wrap this thing up, I just want to make a couple quick notes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to reiterate that Nexon generated $418 million in sales of these cube yep. items and loot box sales in particular from the periods of 2010 to 2021 with, with, when the investigation started. As a result of what was found, they were fined $9 million. And yes, that's just like a little over 2%. This little minor uh, tax like hey you lied to your customers you, <laughs> you, you, you pay us two percent the customers aren't getting any of their money back we don't actually care about them yep. give us those nine million dollars and then also yeah, yeah the nine million dollars goes to the ftc not the people who lost the money that's another thing like people always like shit on like america and all this like oh you can sue anyone for anything you can't make a class action lawsuit in korea i'm pretty sure that's not a thing the people that got fucked over out of all that money that they spent, I mean, granted, they are kind of stupid and delusional for spending that much money on a, on a little 1% upgrade, but still, it can result in problems for people down the line. Yeah, um, as I touched on briefly there as well, this is only what has been discovered so far and what has been discovered from Nexon in particular being investigated through that Korean FTC. What are the odds that something like Trickin this isn't also Stray happening Man. in other Nexon games? I mean, I can't say for certain, but this is certainly places the seed of doubt, even if they deny doing it elsewhere, because of course they'll deny it. They denied it even when they were actively knowingly doing it in MapleStory mm -mm. and maybe you say, hey maple story that's a dumb game i don't care about whatever this doesn't apply to me keep in mind nexon is involved in a lot of other games uh so yeah i mean there was the recently released the finals there's a bunch of upcoming games like arc raiders the first descendant nakwan lost parrot last arc paradise raiders, like, man. and nexon has a My pretty friend story history for that. especially if you're a fan of like online games and mmos nexon has nexon is responsible or at least was the publisher for a lot of games that i've played in the past i don't want to just i mean this particular topic is focused on Nexon, but we have to at least have the understanding if we hadn't already. This sort of thing can and probably is happening, or at least something, some variation of this situation. I bet you Perlibus does the same thing. You think game devs and publishers don't talk about that stuff together? I'm I'm sure they don't disclose like secrets like that, but I feel like they're like Hey, have you done this? It's like, oh yeah, I have actually. Look at all the money I'm making. Oh, kind of sick poggers. I feel like there is internal talking between like devs and like directors. <laughs> With yeah, behind closed doors, exactly. They don't talk boxes, about it publicly ever. Loot boxes that are tied to the cash shop. But this is also can be applied to games that forget loot boxes and cash shops, like the odds of you getting a rare drop in a game. This dynamic RNG stuff, mm -hmm. like certainly and is most likely happening. I guess the ultimate takeaway uh, for me if, from all of this is to try not to get too invested uh, into these heavy RNG systems, especially if you are spending money on them, because not only can they change the rate 
rates of you getting what you want. They could be dynamically doing it based on what you're doing. They can dynamically change how I get my waifu on Genshin. That's illegal. Based on how much you're playing, you based on how much that. you're spending, based on how many boxes you're opening. That can and most certainly is happening in games besides Nexon. And that is just, we have to live in the reality of not knowing when we're dealing with these random systems, if uh, other companies are doing things like Nexon has clearly been doing. But if nothing else, let's forget that part aside. At the very least, you should bear that in mind if you are currently or ever in the future play a Nexon game. No, they I'm have good. done this. They spent a decade doing Nexon this. Games. They lied about doing it. Only through investigation were they receiving a 2% fine on their earnings from doing it. And that is not enough of a fine. I'm just telling you right now, that's not enough 2%. for them to stop doing it in the future. That's why they should fine or like... You know how people can get parking tickets or speeding tickets and rich people, oh, like a $90 parking ticket's like nothing to them. I think Sweden or Norway, they find people parking tickets and speaking tickets based on their income. I think they should totally do that with like, <laughs> with uh, gaming companies or big publishers. That'd be kind of sick. Instead of taking away $9 million, that's like nothing to them. That's literally 2%. Find them for like, I don't know, 5%, 10%, 20%. Like, jeez. They'll probably happily continue to pay that 2% fine if this continues to occur. Yeah. That's all, that's all I got to say. All right. Well, that's going to do it for me today. A little bit of depressing MMO news. Uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed MMOs the vid are depressing. as much as you can enjoy something like this. Based on net worth. Yeah, yeah something time, like that. Right? Take it easy. Alright, very nice video. Force gaming, everyone. Wow, reminding us of how shit it is. Woo! <laughs> Pause the video. Clappers, clappers, clappers. Sindu had a $2 million ticket. That sounds like a personal problem. Mommy! Piss, piss, piss. Shit! Piss, 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 piss. Fuck, 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 fuck,